Ron from Ron Rorty Law. And if you subscribe to this channel, welcome back. Thanks for supporting the law firm. Today's video, we're going to talk about truck parking. And specifically, what does it cost to develop raw land into improved parking suitable for trucks, heavy equipment, construction materials? And we're going to go into all the numbers. All right, so if you follow this channel, I'm a commercial real estate attorney, but I'm also a heavy direct investor into industrial properties. And one of the sub asset classes that we have fallen in love with is industrial outdoor storage, specifically semi truck parking. Now, the statistics are overwhelming. There are 3 million tractor trailers in the United States and only 300,000 paid commercial parking spaces. Obviously, a lot of these trucks are moving, they're on the road, they're staying at truck stops. However, there is still an incredible imbalance because as cities become more active in regulating the types of uses and industrial parking, they eliminate parking spaces for trucks. So as a result, demand is going up. What we're going to talk about in this video are what are the actual costs to take a properly zoned piece of industrial land that is currently not improved, right? We're talking dirt, it can have trees, it can have bushes. And what does it cost to convert that type of land into an improved gravel surface such that you could have trucks parking on there and paying you ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month? All right, let's start with the basics, land costs. Unfortunately, your land cost is one of the most variable dynamics. However, I do think that the higher your initial land price is, the higher you're going to be able to charge for truck parking. So it's a little bit canceling out. I mean, obviously we don't want to overpay. It's really just not the highest and best use. So if you have land that is trading for a million dollars an acre, you're probably not going to be able to be cash flow positive for truck parkings. How on the flip side, I could see anything as low as 50,000, 100,000 an acre to be in a location that is viable for truck parking, suitable demand for just semi truck parking. So, after the land cost, site clearing. This re requires removing all of the major trees, bushes. Uh, any type of vegetation or leftover trash removal. This is going to range from $1,000 to $4,000 an acre. You're also going to have dumpster removal and haul off. Maybe you can burn the vegetation. Maybe you can cut it up and give it away as firewood. Lots of different options for site clearing. Second is going to be grading. Uh, you're also going to need grading and gravel. These may be the same vendor. They're going to have bulldozers. They're going to have excavators. They're going to have actual grader equipment. And you want to have a topo topographical survey conducted prior to this, maybe during your due diligence period, because it's going to be important to lay out the drainage flow of your property. And again, depending on where you're located within a city or within the county limits, you may need to permit provide a site plan which shows the drainage runoff including the depth of your gravel compaction and where that runoff is going to go. These costs are between I would call it 5000 an acre for grading. Again, my point of reference is infill locations within DFW. So I've got a good choice of lots of different vendors. Gravel is going to be one of the more expensive pieces of this entire project. The entire surface improvement and depending on how many acres you have, it, it can be an astronomical cost because I would say that the surface, you really have to decide what level do you want to be at. And this is a little side detraction, but if you just wanted to clear a site and not put down any improved product, so no concrete, no gravel, no crushed asphalt, millings, anything like that, you could just do raw land. There are people that park trucks on dirt. This is probably considered class C and you're not going to get the best return because there's going to be mud puddles. There's a chance that the trucks could get stuck in there. Depending on your product, that's your lowest uh, return. You may want to look at class C parking. Class B, I would consider as gravel. So some type of hard compacted surface. Um, it can be again, not quite riprap, but a little bit smaller than that. Something that's compacted, it's scraped down and it's going to have a bit of flex base. That's class B. And then finally, the top of the crop is class A, which is a fully paved facility. So this will be fully paved with lights, with, with automatic gate. It may have security. This is going to have a lot of features that's considered a class A truck parking facility. Uh, you may have restrooms, showers, that sort of thing. Wi-Fi. People always ask me about Wi-Fi. 
But the Wi-Fi actually is less about the class of the facility and more as it speaks to the length of stay. So if you have daily parkers, they're going to want more amenities suitable to Wi-Fi, um, showers, uh, food trucks, that sort of thing. But if they're monthly parkers, they don't necessarily need Wi-Fi because they're not sitting in your lot uh, overnight. Fencing. A critical element is security. And, and these are all kind of related to security, which is fencing, gate, and lighting, and security cameras. But I'm going to break them down specifically. So for fencing, let's call it $16 a linear foot. You can get on Google Maps. You can trace around the outline. If you have a boundary survey, if you have an Alta survey, you can measure precisely how many feet of fencing you need. And this is for six foot chain link with a top rail and a bottom rail and it includes three strand barb at the top. Suffice to say, this is going to get you a bare minimum type of fencing product, but you can always enhance it for extra security by putting a bottom rail. You can make it taller. You could easily make it eight foot chain link. You can use a heavier gauge as well that makes it harder to cut through with bolt cutters. So there's a lot of things you can ferry, but, but if people just want a number to be able to plug in and say, okay, for a fence, for chain link fence, that's how much. However, certain municipalities, they may not allow chain link for new developments. And so you may need to put opaque fencing. Opaque can be either wood fencing or some type of metal R panel. Those are going to be more expensive. Uh, wood, wood is actually not that expensive, but it's not as durable, won't last as long. So I would roughly double the price for R panel fencing. Again, it depends on um, how deep the concrete, the spacing, the height of all that. But for rough ballpark, you want to double it for R panel. Uh, let's talk about a gate. So another nice feature in addition to being fully secured is putting an automatic gate. The alternative is that the guy got, gets out of his truck, he walks over, he does the keypad or he has a key, he opens the chain, he slides it open both sides and then he drives his truck through and then he comes back, closes it. It's, it's a lot of work, it can take a lot of time and depending on the number of users you have, people may leave the gate open because they're lazy. Either they say, I'm coming back out. We really recommend an automatic gate if you want to be a class B facility, because what that does is it allows people to either use a remote control opener to open the gate remotely as they're driving up to the facility. It will automatically close behind them with an automatic um, timer or a, a sensor as it goes by that breaks the beam. We like automatic gates for a lot of reasons. They cost about $5,000 for a nice commercial commercial quality LiftMaster unit, but the gate itself is incredibly expensive, the gate and installation. So for example, $30,000 will get you a 30 foot cantilever gate, which is great for a gravel surface if you don't want a sliding gate, a rolling gate. A real quick primer, you can have a swing gate, which is kind of the example I showed you earlier. They typically will pivot in the middle, so swing gate, and you can have shorter length sections there, which means a less weight and smaller support poles and less depth, so it's cheaper. You can also have a rolling gate, which has that metal channel that a wheel will roll over. The problem with those metal channels is it has to be installed on concrete or asphalt because if it gets little rocks in there, it'll derail the gate because it's just on metal wheels. It'll derail it or it'll jam and it'll get stuck. And so you can't have any rocks. So if you're anything on gravel, like our facilities tend to be, then you're gonna want a cantilever gate where the gate is suspended over the air and it just kind of slides across. I like the cantilever gates, however, you're limited in size based on kind of physical transportation because while we have a 30 foot gate, it also has to have, I think it's 40% or 30% of its length that is um, on the other side of the cantilever. So if you think about it as a, as a seesaw, half of the gate is over here, but you can't have the full length um, moving. You have to have a fairly large portion to balance it out on the other side. And so the total weight of that gate is in the hundreds of pounds, but only 30% is able to be used to be open at a time. So we have a 30 foot section. It's, it's super wide. It's plenty for semi trucks. However, the gate, I mean, it's got to be 70 feet long. It's, it's incredibly long and only 40% of it moves at once.
Signage. Signage is critical. I think that you want to check with your municipality again on what's allowed, but you've got to advertise. And I'll talk in another video about how to find truck drivers using Facebook, different online platforms, but signage is, is critical. In, in this day and age, people are going to drive by, they're going to see it, and that's what's really going to drive some initial traffic as you're trying to lease up from zero occupancy. Lights. Another critical element, there are two major options that I would say is either solar powered or electric. And obviously solar is limited, but it's cheaper, it's faster. Um, the biggest cost with electric is trenching and getting that out there. So for me, I would probably decide, do I have electricity on site already? If I don't, I'm going to spend the extra money to run electric poles all around the perimeter because I'm, I'm, I got electricians out there, they're gonna be trenching anyway, so you might as well have them do the whole perimeter. If I already have electric service to a portion of the property, I may not do full electric lights everywhere. I may have back corner with, with solar powered and leave the electric lights in their existing configuration. So it's really up to you whether you're buying an existing improved property, but if you're gonna do it right, if you're gonna run electricity and have the trenching out there anyway, you might as well run it on the whole perimeter. Lights looking about like $1,000 per pole, again, assuming maybe like a four acre site, so you're gonna have 16, you might have 20 lights out there. Um, and then you have your electric electrician costs, uh, permit fees, tap fees. I mean, the the lights should be budgeted at a thousand per pole, plus about twenty or thirty thousand just for the the cost to get the crews out there. Uh, the final one I'll talk about, and it tends to be the cheapest, is some type of security cameras. I do, I don't think they're necessarily going to prevent crime, but I do think it deters the casual opportunistic thief, and it does provide a record for insurance or reviewing that footage after the fact. The types of cameras that we typically use are not uh, Wi-Fi based. The cameras that we have are SIM card, so you buy like a ten or twenty dollar SIM card, which lasts for two gigabytes of data for for six months, something like that, and then the cameras have a solar panel that records, it powers everything. It's able to transmit cell tower. You can get great live streaming. I'll show some photos up here of the images that we get from our cameras, but it's a really good system. Having SIM cameras is a better option instead of trying to blanket you know, a five and a half acre facility with Wi-Fi signal. It's really just not necessary. And the solar panels are great. If you have power, then you can plug in all of these same SIM powered cameras. You can plug them in, they run off like a micro USB and you can just connect them with outdoor plugs. So that's it for the cost. I hope this was useful. Uh, I'll throw up all the numbers. I'll give you sample totals for say like a four acre development. But if you guys have more questions about truck parking, developing these industrial facilities, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and we'll see you on Twitter.